and two in the MIAA statewide playoff brackets. Both of these teams clearly in playoff contention. Some of the few Central Massachusetts teams that are in playoff contention in the statewide bracket, but that's neither here They're nor there. At least in the top 32. There are some teams that might be able to play their way in in that uh, 33 to 45 Certainly. neighborhood that uh, are going to end up playing, uh, you know, that 20 to 32 section of that the seeded bracket. But, uh, yeah, there's a few teams that still have some possibilities, including Fitchburg, you know, but they got to get to 500. That's the key to teams that are under that uh, top 32 team bracket, uh, you know, points-wise. So, you know, I think it's already proven out that there's going to be more than 32 teams in each divisional playoff. Right. Uh, it's just a matter of how many play-in games to get through a, an early first round and then see where the matchups really fall after that. All right, we are going to step aside for just two minutes, and when we come back, we're going to have all sorts of information for you. Again, previewing this game, going to be starting in about 15 minutes from now. 8 o'clock at the top of the hour, we'll have starting lineups for you. We'll have all sorts of pregame information. Todd will be back with us as well. But as always, you're listening to the countdown to tip off here on the K-Zone, WPKZ AM 1280 and 105.3 FM. From the Wellness Center on the campus of Worcester State University, we say good evening everyone and welcome to those of you joining us here on RFM as tonight it's the Class A Midwatch League Championship right here on RFM from the Wellness Center here at Worcester State University, Worcester, Massachusetts tonight. It's the clash that everyone has been waiting for as the top seed Blue Devils come into the matchup tonight with a 13-2 overall record. One of those losses earlier this year to this opposition tonight, a 54-52 loss to Wachusett back on Friday, December 17th. And the Blue Devils match up with that aforementioned Wachusett Mountaineer team, second ranked team overall here in this Midwatch League Tournament Class A. They bring their 13 and four record into this matchup tonight and they lost the matchup against Leminster back on Friday, January the 21st, a 53-52 Leminster win in the waning seconds of that one. Just one fingertip longer for Tucker McDonald. And that is a completed Mountaineer win in that last matchup on Friday, January the 21st. So it's a season split to this point and where better to solve the split than right here on neutral court tonight at Worcester State University. Great to have you along with us here on RFM. Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins and you. Great to have you along with us tonight. We are in simulcast with our partners at the K-Zone, so we'll have the K-Zone pregame rejoining us in a matter of moments as well. A little different modifications tonight had to be made in order to accommodate going live here from Worcester State. Can't say enough great things about the support we've gotten from the people here at Worcester State tonight. Stand by, Radio rejoins us right now. And back high above court side here on the legendary AM 1280. And the new guy for the last decade, 105.3 FM and WPKZStream.com. It is the K-Zone. It's the Midwatch League Championship right here on WPKZ and with our partners at our FM. Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins, and you high above courtside tonight here at the Wellness Center at Worcester State University. And great to have you along with us for what we know will be an exciting rematch. Season split to this point between these two teams Leminster picking up the most recent victory on January the 21st. The Mountaineers with the victory back on December 17th. 54-52 Mountaineers win at home back on the 17th. A 53-52 Leminster win on January 21st leads to the season split. And you know what? Nobody's got home court advantage tonight. It's neutral site action. It's the Midwatch Class A Boys Basketball Championship. And it's right here for you on the K-Zone Game of the Week and here on RFM as well. It's great to have you with us as it is each and every broadcast week. The K-Zone Game of the Week is brought to you by Acme Carpet One. There's lots of pros and cons in the flooring business and these are the pros online at acmecarpetone.com. 
Let's talk about the road to the tournament. How did these two teams get here? That's an excellent question, so glad you asked. And that look around the tournament is brought to you by Bank Hometown. Bank Hometown's free checking account works for you. Visit bankhometown.com or stop into their convenient Lemonster branch on Sack Boulevard. Bank Hometown, member FDIC. Bank Hometown brings us this look around the tournament. How did we get here? Let's track first the top seed, Lemonster. How did they find their way into this final tonight? Lemonster picks up a win on the opening night of the tournament back on Valentine's Day, Monday, February the 14th. A 66-33 win for Lemonster over Westboro, the eighth seed in Class A. Lemonster then followed that up with a semifinal battle on Wednesday, February the 16th. It was a 62-45 win as Lemonster downs the four seed Neshoba. That puts Lemonster in to this league championship action tonight. Meanwhile, other side of the bracket, what was the road to this championship for Wachusett? It also started back on Valentine's Day Monday. It was a 76-45 win for Wachusett over Algonquin. Downing the seven seed did the Mountaineers. And then into the semifinal against the three seed, Shepherd Hill, on Wednesday, February the 16th, a 57-49 win for Wachusett in that battle against Shepherd Hill puts Wachusett into the Midwatch League Class A Championship. And when you think about, of course, where does this fit? That's kind of the, the big question of how do you, you know, consider this Midwatch League Championship? The idea behind this for the athletic directors that were involved in planning it was for either this Midwatch League Championship or in other sports, the Samada Championship to stand in for the former district round that used to be run by the MIAA that was exclusively Central Mass only. It's an opportunity for the teams that win here tonight to raise a banner and of course in the three division classes A, B and C across the Midwatch League. This is the first night of three days that they will be here at Worcester State University providing this kind of exciting basketball action. Then of course it's on to the statewide MIAA playoffs. Each and every one of these wins for the associated teams that are able to play are points that accrue toward postseason standings. So for Lemonster, a win tonight would be a win over another quality Division I opponent. Meanwhile, for Wachusett, it would be a win over a quality Division II opponent. An opportunity, again, to add points to your strength of schedule to improve your power rating toward your postseason standings. At this point in time, based on what we know about where these two teams are in the statewide brackets, Bill Thomas, we feel fairly safe these two teams should each qualify in their associated division. Well, if you just want to look at uh, their numbers, their standing, uh, Lemister latest uh, bracket standings had them at number eight in division two, and what you said, I believe, uh, checked in at about 20, but they're both well above the 500 threshold. Uh, threshold that's going to put him into the tournament no matter what. It's really about home games and the higher uh, seed you can position yourself, you know, the more ho uh, home court advantage you're going to be able to take uh, used to your advantage going forward until you get to a neutral site if you work your way that deep into the playoffs. So it's all about home field advantage, home court advantage for both of these two teams right now. And uh, Lemons has got himself in a great position. If they can win to go deep in the tournament as a, as a home host and uh, but uh, Wachusett's got some work to do. They might get a first round uh, home game, but then, uh, you know, it's hard to tell where, where the path is going to be. They could end up down the Cape or they could end out in Springfield. You never know the way this tournament's going to be set up this year. Once we get into that statewide bracket play, it's teams 1 through 32. The Antis and 500 or better records, they have got to play their way in, and that could be 16 through 32 seeds hosting a play-in round in that action in order to qualify for the state tournament. But once we get to the seeded games of 1 through 32, obviously 1 through 16 will have home games, 16 through 32. 32, or excuse me, uh, 17 through 32 will travel uh, to those top seeds, and that will proceed all the way through until at this point, at least the final four, and perhaps the state championship in each of the state's numbered divisions. That's the backdrop. That's where everybody ends up. That's the goal, if you will, for action ahead. We've got Lemonster and Wachusett for you. One banner at a time. It's hat and t-shirt night 
here at Worcester State University. Winner is the Midwatch Class A Boys Basketball Champion inaugural here in 2022. And we got it for you here on the K-Zone. Game of the week, it's brought to you by Dorico's Market, a full service meat market in Delhi, Worcester's go-to old fashioned butcher shop. Hey, right down on Shrewsbury Street and specialty market since 1947. And it's now at 1123 Central Street in Lemonster. Two locations, that's all the better for your Dorico's Italian butcher shop needs. More action to come. We're going to continue counting you down here on the K-Zone. We step aside. We've got so much more to come. You're listening to the Game of the Week here on the K-Zone. For those of you joining us on RFM tonight, great to have you along with us. As we set off the top, Kazo will rejoin us momentarily. Billy, Kate, and I will continue counting you down. We've got about 90-ish seconds until introductions will begin here inside the stadium tonight. Radio will rejoin us somewhere around that same time. We'll get them lumped in. We've got National Anthem, and then it is off to tip-off of Lemonster and Wachusett. Changes you're going to see here on RFM tonight. Again, little things go a long way, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, some things have to be adjusted when you come to a new place. So right now, little technical difficulties uh, with the score bug at the bottom of the screen. But would we underserve our viewer? Absolutely not. So we find a way to stick it in, as you'll see there now coming up on your screen. That's the score bug you will have on your screen as action persists tonight. Lemonster's score will be located on the left side of the screen. Wachusett's on the right side of the screen. You'll be able to see the quarter in the middle and the clock on your screen. In addition, of course, to the play-by-play -play that you'll hear from us on the radio side of things, which, as you all know, will include time and score and fouls at a frequent rate. So we'll have all of that coming up for you as we continue tonight. Radio rejoins us in a matter of moments. You stay here, you stay with us, and we've got you covered. Let's join the public address announcer here in the house tonight to be able to hear those opening introductions. Please show your appreciation by demonstrating good sportsmanship and respect for all in attendance. Ensure that your behaviors reflect the values that should be identified with these fine student athletes. Assume responsibility for your behavior and the behavior of those around you. As we continue to do our part to ensure the safety of our student athletes and the community in the ongoing battle against COVID. Back here on the K-Zone Game of the Week. Great to have you along with us here at Worcester State University, Lemonster and Wachusett coming up. Opening introductions going on down on the floor. Let's meet the starting lineups. Starters are brought to you by Woodcomb Insurance. Woodcomb has the right coverage at the right price with a local team of insurance pros ready to help. Online at woodcomb.com.
We thank you for your service to our country. At this time, please everyone stand while we honor our nation and our flag with the point of our national anthem. And with that, we're ready for basketball here at the Wellness Center at Worcester State tonight. It's great to have you along with us on the K-Zone Game of the Week and here on RFM. Leminster and Wachusett will duke it up for a third time in this regular season, but this for the Mid-Watch League Class A Boys Basketball Championship, and they'll do it here on neutral court tonight. Bill Thomas, we've set it up. Here we go. I don't know how neutral it is. You know, Wachusa was in that girls game and came away winners and a lot of student body uh, kids here from, from Wachusa. Let me give a quick peek down here in this end zone to our right, or the under the basket to our right. But uh, a spirited crowd nonetheless uh, on the Lemister side. A little uh, picture down here is the Lemister faithful and uh, expecting a great game tonight. Indeed we are, and here we go. At midcourt we go. Alex Moisten stands in for Lemonster. Grayson Baker to jump for the Mountaineers in his six foot seven frame. Taps it on to Tucker McDonald, who misses the initial lay in, but it's a great follow on the play. Chasen. Yeah, it was Chasen with the lay in. Thank you, Kate. Right away, Lemonster getting beat on the offensive board. And a quick 2 0 lead for the Mountaineers, and then the steal. Bates brings the ball back up floor. The kick, step in. Bates tried to pay off three, wasn't able to deliver. And down comes the basketball in the hand of Viola. He snaps it up floor and it gets knocked out of play by Tucker McDonald. Coach Gibbons said earlier this year of Tucker McDonald, he's our engine. And right now that engine is revved up in about fourth gear tonight. Well, you know, rematches have a way of doing that, especially one that leaves a sour taste in your mouth. And, and Tucker came away with one the last time these two teams met. Dada with the basketball as Lemister goes left to right here in quarter number one. Dada gets it back from Viola. Well short of the mark with a three-pointer. It's out of play. And the Mountaineer faithful on this right end of the floor. Let him know about it as the ball will go out of play and the ball will go back to Wachusett. Kate, that one looked a little nervous. It certainly did. And we saw during warm-ups as well the Wachusett faithful over there giving a uh, giving a ribbing to Lemonster in pregame warm-ups. And so a little bit cold in warm-ups too in front of that uh, pretty big crowd. McDonald snaps a baseline pass and Grayson Baker finishes it at the rim. A 4-0 start for Wachusett. Just a minute and 10 into this one. Baker no points in their last matchup between these two teams. So he'll be interesting. He's been key here already in the early going. And showing a 2-3 zone with man-to-man -man principles are the Mountaineers. Lemonster wearing the road white tops, white bottoms, trimmed in royal blue and black. Royal blue numerals front and back as Baker takes it away from Moisen. And here comes Bates and McDonald up floor with the basketball. And there's a traveling violation as Chasen gets his hand on it, skidded the pivot foot, and the ball will go back to Lemonster teams exchange turnovers. And it brings the Lemonster faithful into the conversation. Call and response. Back and forth, they will go end line to end line tonight. Well, and usually Lemonster travels very, very well, but quite a uh, quite a small crowd in comparison to Wachusett's. But Wachusett's crowd 
has become notorious in central Massachusetts for their fandom. The Badlands, they call them on Twitter. Viola with the basketball, corner for Moisin right. Moisin puts it on the deck, it gets deflected by Chasen, straight up in the air. Baker makes the fair catch, finds it up floor for Chasen. And then Chasen will dribble it to the foul line and pull it back out past the arc. Four turnovers already for Lemons. Steps into a three, does Bates, and Bates delivers. It's a 7-0 Mountaineer run, 5.45 to play here at quarter one. One of the, oh, go ahead, Bill Lemons to play tight early on. One of the things we have to remember for our fans taking a look on RFM on the stream, multiple three-point shot lines out there. So that one, be careful, that was a three. Drive down the baseline, and Asia steps out of play. And back down the floor, this goes in the hands of the Mountaineers. Already and turnover number five for Lemonster. Coach Grutchfield says we need to change some personnel. McCormick and Hawes will come into the basketball game for Asia and Encarnacion. We saw Hawes bring some great energy in the third quarter in uh, the semifinal game. See what he's got tonight. And Hawes is going to guard McDonald. Bates to Chasen, look for the bounce entry. Instead, it's a flash, it's Stangus, launches a three and buries it. 5-11 to play here in quarter one. It's a 10-0 Mountaineer run to open this one and timeout on the floor. Lemonster's coach Kevin Grutchfield has to spend the timeouts. You know, Kate, and, uh, I'm sure you can talk some stats, but the one stat that we don't like to talk about is these single digit quarters that Lemonster runs into. Yep. Lemonster running into one right now in their last matchup at the gym at Lemonster High School. It was a 15-2 first quarter advantage. Lemonster in that one. Right now, Wachusett is running away with this first quarter. And we know in Lemonster's last matchup, offense was at a premium in quarters two and three. Quarters one and four, they were able to rev it up and they were able to put their foot on the gas, but they've not been consistent quarter to quarter in their offensive production. And right now, Wachusett is just handing it to them. And we talked about it this morning on the K-Zone's morning commute with Sean Sweeney and crew. And the reality was, Kate Lemister could not come out flat. They are worse than flat right now. I'm not sure they got off the bus. Well, the nice part is 5'11 still remaining in the, in the quarter, and Lemonster does have a prolific offense when they are able to turn it on. And Coach Kevin Grutchfield has gotten his offense to be able to respond multiple times. So he's just got to ignite the fire, and they can get this 10-point deficit handled, but they got to turn it on now. Sporting one of the best basketball teams in central Massachusetts, a 10-point lead. Not sure that kind of a spot is a good deal. Back down floor, left to right comes Lemonster. Hawes with the attempted throw away and McDonald slaps it into the bench. Lemonster will retain possession at the 4.54 mark of quarter one and 13 seconds to shoot. They need something, Bill Thomas, to go right on this possession. Yeah, somebody's got to find, find some magic somewhere. Just Look inside and get, get stuff on the board. Viola with the bounce, entry for Carr. Gets it right back, then there down low. Hawes steps into the lane, oh. it rolls off the rim. It will not fall, and the rebound is brought down by Chasen. From right to left, he comes up floor, splits a double team, has it taken away by McCormick. And in transition, chaos on the floor right now. Dada tries to slip a defender, he missed another lay-in. And back the other way goes the basketball in the hands of Theo Stangas. He'll send it back before he crosses the timeline for McDonald, who's calling out a play and just steps across oh, oh, oh. at the 10-second mark. Forgot that about that. <laughs> 15 to shoot. Whoops it easy. That's an oopsie. That's <laughs> it, what we that call. very much almost was an oopsie. That's an oopsie. Stangus with a bounce entry for Baker. Turnaround. Doesn't go. Tried to slap it back in on the second attempt. It didn't go. And the tie-up on the rebounding action with McCormick and Baker. And the alternate possession favors Lemonster. Baker already making his presence known. I don't know that he played in the last matchup because no points for him whatsoever for Wachusa. And he is a presence out there. Six foot seven, Kate, no doubt about it. And he is now out of the game, which seemingly reduces the height by the Mountaineers on the floor. You replace him on the inside with Nick Ciccone, the senior. Another miss three. Indeed, and Ciccone's got the rebound. Right now, Wachusett out rebounding Lemonster and turnover is a problem for Lemonster. Donald for Stangas, put another three on the board. It's a 13-0 run at the three and a half minute mark of quarter one. Things going from bad to worse right now for Lemonster. McCormick looks for the entry. 
finds the foul line. It's Carr, gets it up on the rim. It touches a lot of iron, but it will fall through the basket. 13-2 opening run. Lemonster's on the board with 3-12 to play in the first quarter. Finally get rid of that goose egg. Play some defense now. Stangus flashes for the pass. Viola takes it away, and there's a whistle for a foul call. Viola is not pleased, but the referee said he took it out of the shooting arm, came across the arm, and it's a three-shot foul. It's going to send Stangus to the line to shoot three. Lemonster up to their waist in quicksand here in quarter one. Stangus' first will roll out. Let me see the crowd. Uncharacteristically yes, quiet. quiet under the basket there, and as opposed to the Wachusett crowd making all kinds of noise down Not the other end. Not used to being down by 11 I here was going to say, I'd describe it as stunned to this point. Second one will not go. And Lemonster's student section gets pushed back off of the blue out of bounds indicator. There is a nice thick blue baseline and sideline up and down the floor. They're trying to keep the crowd back off of that line. Over three is Stangus on that trip, so Lemonster fortuitous turn of events there from the line. Pretty sure I could hear an exhale down on the court. Carr gets a feed from Viola. Turn around from the left elbow this time, and he's got a pair. Somebody's right now it's Wachusett 13 and Dylan Carr 4. Somebody's got to step up, and, and Dylan has done it up to this point. Need more help, though. 2.35 to play here in the first. Chasen lost the handle, got it to Stangus, got it right back now on the right of the arc. He'll drive into the paint, kick it back for Stangus. Stangus with a display of dribbling. Now drives on McCormick, and the foul comes on the rebounding action. And Coach Kevin Grutchfield is not happy. And that's going to send Theo Stangus back to the line, 0 of 3 on the last trip. About the only good news that comes on that foul being whistled. McCormick picks up his first team second for Lemonster of the first half. Stangus does hit that one. One, one of four. four. Hey, pinch, <laughs> poke, you owe me a coke. Indeed, indeed. Get back in your lane, Todd. I know. Good thing I know. Good thing I like you. Two of two on that trip for Stangus. And Moisen will check back into the basketball game for Lemonster. Viola for Dada up floor. Dada throws on the brakes, caught in a double team. He'll go cross court and open McCormick. Sets up with a deep three. It's long on the mark. Viola saves it and keeps it in play. But he puts it directly in the hands of Adam Bates. And here we go, right to left, down floor for the Mountaineers. Perimeter shooting for Lemonster right now, not close. And they seem to be struggling, Kate, with those three three-point lines that are out there. This is not MTV's rockin' jock out there where you have four and five-point baskets. As McDonald fires up a five-pointer, put it on the board for three. My, oh, my. That is college men's distance, and he drilled it. Nothing but net. So the black three-point line is the men's college basketball line. The blue arc as Dada comes down floor from the left wing, pulls up, and he's on the board. 90 seconds left in a forgettable first quarter here for Lemonster. 18-6 is Wachusett's advantage. The blue three-point line is the women's three-point line at the college level, and then the red three-point line drawn in expertly by the folks here at Worcester State. That is the high school three-point line. Carr gets the feed from Viola at the foul line again. That one a hard in and out, and the rebound is brought down inside by Ciccone. No offensive boards thus far in the early going for Lemonster. Final minute of the first. Chasen throws up a three, got the back rim from the left side. Lemonster comes down with the rebound. It's Viola in transition. About a 22-second differential shot clock to game clock. Dada thought about a three very deep. Forget the three-point lines. Launches this one from West Boylston. That one's not going to go. Battle at the end line. Last touch by Zingarella newly into the game. And they say it will be Lemonster basketball with a fresh 30. Nice hustle by Cairo over there. Banged it off to watch you player. Good job. Eight-second differential on the inbound. And there's a foul on the inbounding action. It's whistled against Viola for the forearm shiver to create that push-off, Kate. 
That'll be his second. It'll be team third. And Wachusett loving every moment. And they are grinding Lemonster's gears right now. And Viola is going to have to grab a seat. Two uh, early quick fouls on Kevin. Might end up watching most of this first half. Blue Devils are going to have to dig deep here to bring themselves out of this hole. The left hand three, luckily not whistled for a foul as Chasing got taken out by McCormick. Shot clock off, 20 seconds left here in quarter one. Dada for Asias, now McCormick. And around they go back to Dada on the left. 12 to shoot. Lamas are content to play catch for a last shot. Moisen will throw it up from the left side. Doesn't go, Asias the follow. He spins it in, he hung in the air to finish. Final two seconds of the first. And that's the way this one will come to a close. One quarter in the books. Mid-Watch League Class A Boys Basketball Championship. Wachusett dominates quarter number one. 18-8 through one quarter here at the Wellness Center at Worcester State tonight on the K-Zone Game of the Week. It's brought to you by Manny's Appliance. Manny's features a complete lineup of major brand name appliances with exclusive rebates the big box stores do not have. Buy the best from Manny's, 120 Hamilton Street in Lemonster. Bill Thomas, I think we need mid-game adjustments at the end of one quarter. Well, I think Lemonster should take a deep breath and, and be thanking their lucky stars. They're only down by 10. Uh, you know, I, I think the mid-game, the mid-half adjustment, I guess we could call it, is... Uh, it's no mystery. You've got to find a way to score some points here and find a hot hand. And, you know, with your, your playmaker and ball handler already picking up two quick fouls, we'll have to see who starts running the point. But, uh, you know, Dada, he, I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to run that baseline and, and uh, see if he can't wake the team up. But we'll have to see where they start looking for for points. Kate's first quarter stats are brought to you by Bolton Orchards. Get fresh every day in Bolton at the junctions of Route 110 and 117. Take the short drive today to Bolton Orchards. For Lemonster right now, we have the uh, the elusive double-digit scoring in the quarter right now. Only eight points in the first quarter for Lemonster. Let's talk about the fact that Wachusett started with a 13-0 run there. Stangus has a team high eight points, two of five from the line for Wachusett. So that means 8-5. Lemons is outscored in the last half of that first quarter. That's Bingo. a win. It's got to be a silver line into that uh, storm cloud somewhere. Coach Kevin Grudgefield asking for an explanation on that particular foul because that foul there will be the first on Moisen, but the team fourth. And right now Wachusett sporting a clean sheet in the foul category. And he's called for a hold there on the inside. McDonald bobbles the inbound and it is out of play on the sideline. Official out of position standing at midcourt, but he saw the ball across the sideline. And it will be Lemonster basketball, 7.48 to play here in the second quarter. Nose Dada running the point now with Viola on the bench. Dada right now at the top of the key with Viola, Bill Thomas, who is, finds himself on the bench right now. Carr will launch up a deep two, and down that one will go. And Lemonster is into double digits. Carr right now, a team high six points for the Blue Devils. And the lead is just eight at 18-10. Previous matchup, Carr had two points. Ciccone drops it off for Chasen, who felt like he had somebody following him and realized that he actually had a lot of space. He was able to swing it to the right and find McDonald. Sometimes you hear footsteps. Indeed you do. McDonald blows right by McCormick and leaves it off the glass good. And now Coach Tom Gibbons wants to spend the time out. 7-0-1 to play here in the second quarter. It's 20-10 Wachusett's lead, and Coach Gibbons clearly didn't feel like this second quarter started the way he wanted it to. So he's going to take a timeout seemingly very early in this second quarter. I think uh, just a little... Uh reaffirmation of uh, let's stay aggressive and uh, Lemons can put them together quick so we don't want him to get on any kind of mini run here and turn this momentum around uh, within a couple of possessions so I'm sure he's just telling him calm his kids down a little bit let's get some good hands up defense tell you they played a great defense the first quarter and they need to find a way to continue that you got one comment you always talk about the fashion plates here in the basketball game I want to talk about right now one of the lone female coaches on the boys side of the action coach Jackie Buffoli amazing Wachusett green suit from head to toe over there on the Wachusett bench again 
kudos to Coach Buffoli, one of the few female I don't think I've ever really seen a female the coach on the male here. side. No, absolutely not. So not only is she on the male side doing a great job, but she's also rocking quite the outfit tonight. So that's my fashion. My fashion played over there. I'm jealous. That's the uh, the sea green top, sea green bottoms with the white high tops, Kate. I'm, I got to go talk to her about where <laughs> she got all that. The, the accoutrements for that, because that is amazing. Absolutely. Wachusett always phenomenally dressed. It's the best dressed coaching staff in Central Mass. Ball put back into play. There's a reach in foul. It's whistled against the Mountaineers. Lemonster will keep the basketball. 6.46 to play here in the second That'll quarter. That'll be McDonald's first team first of the half. Well, she's played an entire quarter without committing a foul, hard to believe. Dada with the feed to Moisen, missed the three. Asias goes for the follow. It's stripped out of his hands by Chasen. Up floor, McDonald tried the short bounce, put it into the hands of Ciccone. He peeled it back out to the top of the key and to McDonald. McDonald will underhand this one to Chasen. Jake the Cat, as Coach Gibbons called him. Quick, excellent defender. We've seen that throughout. His team high this year was 28 against Shrewsbury. Coach Gibbons calls him a pleasant surprise. He's been great here in the first half. He'll set this three-pointer away for Bates, and Bates rattles it on the rim as the shot clock expires. It ends up rolling out of play. The ball will go back to Lemonster. Six minutes to play here in the second quarter, a 20 to 10 Wachusett lead. Cadence has seemed to calm down a bit on both sides of the ball here in the second quarter. Watch Houston in that 2-3 defense wearing the forest green road, tops and bottoms trimmed in white and black. Ooh. Black numerals front and back and Watch Houston straight line across the chest of the jersey. Watch Houston coaching staff demanding a travel call on okay. that pre well, previous possession. I think possession. he wanted a double dribble on Cairo over there. He dribbled, picked the ball up and put it back on the floor. But uh, nonetheless, uh, they got what they wanted in the end. With a turnover. Exactly right, Kate. Coach Gibbons shows off the guns to call out a play as he says, strong, strong coming down floor. This is McDonald. Will swing to the right, put it in the hands of Chasen. Chasen with the left hand dribble, straight down the lane, he slides and soft off the glass and good. Inside defense, gotta uh, control that lane there as soon as he breaks. Gotta give up your man, you can't let him run that lane like that. One of the things we're seeing out of this Wachusett team that we have been not seeing out of Lemonster tonight and occasionally throughout the season, they're hitting all their layups. They get an open look on a layup and they're hitting it. Carr got the basketball, went with the head fake, then gave up the dribble. Tried to sling it to Encarnacion, he didn't get it. All the way out to Warren Asias, through the lane, jump stop, gets tied up, got the shot up, it rolled off the rim and out of play. It's Wachusett basketball. That's turnover number eight for Lemonster. 4.55 to play in the second quarter, it's 22-10. Wachusett's lead in this one. Blue Devils limited to perimeter passing for the most part in this first half. Zingarella controls the basketball from right to left, coming over the timeline. Zingarella on Moisen, dish to the flashing Stangus. The right hand drive, foul line fade for Stangus. Got the front rim and it rattles home. His third three. 14 point Mountaineer advantage at 24-10. That's my bad, that was just a two. The Badlands letting the Lemonster fans hear it from their end of the floor as Encarnacion's shot will not fall. It gets tapped off of a Mountaineer out of play. Lemonster will keep the basketball. Okay, Lemons have any points in the second quarter? They have one. They one, have one. One basket, one basket from the field. Yeah, two points. two points. They had eight at the end of the first quarter. They have ten at the halfway point of quarter number two. Defense has always been their hallmark all season long, but they have been struggling on the offensive end in the last two games. They've had quarters of brilliance, but then quarters of just... Macias with the spin, and out of play, the ball gets slapped by Ciccone with the solid defense, and he turns to the crowd and fires him up on the baseline. A college level intensity on a college level campus tonight with a 360 degree crowd and the crowd that is wearing blue and white to our left stunned in silence. I actually like the baseline crowd. Indeed I do as well, Bill Thomas. As Asias drives the lane, takes out Zingarella, it's an offensive foul and the ball goes back to the Mountaineers from bad to worse for Lemonster. The Badlands are fired up. Only so many times you're gonna get three shots on a possession or three opportunities on a possession, and you got to at least get one quality shot. Lemonster failed to do so. 
Zingarella in triple threat position. He'll put it off to Ciccone at the left. Chasen comes around the world, picks up the ball. Trades places with Bates. Throws up the three, excuse me, traded places with Ciccone's three. That one will rattle out and down into the hands of Dada. Three and a half minute mark, second quarter. 24-10, Wachusett's lead. Right now, Lemons are finding themselves in a bit of quicksand. Nothing seeming going, seemingly going right on either end of the ball. Dada for Viola. Entry for yeah. Moisson. Cross court giveaway. It's Chasen. Tried to look up floor on the break. It got swatted down. Turn the action. Up floor Viola. Finds Encarnacion. Double clutch in the air, and the lay-in is good. Nice job letting the defense blow by right there. Lemonster is half to the lead once again at 24-12, under the three-minute mark of the second quarter. Jason uh, finds McDonald cutting down the lane and just missed the layup off the left. Back up floor on the break, it's Dada who gets slapped down by Chasen. Foul is ruled on the floor. That'll be Chasen's first team second of the half for Wachusett. I was going to say, Mountaineers far from foul trouble at the 2.43 mark here of the first half. Great to have you along with us tonight on the K-Zone Game of the Week on the legendary AM 1280. And for the last decade, 105.3 FM, Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins in you. Also with our partners on RFM, Facebook.com slash Media Rivalry. As Viola gets the inbound, slashes down the lane, layup is good, and a foul. Viola bringing a little spark back to the court. Lemonster has reduced the lead to 10. It's the closest they've been, Bill Thomas, throughout the basketball game since they were down just eight in the first quarter. Can't make a single digit, so. Indeed they cannot as Viola failed to complete the three-point play. Back down floor comes Zingarella with the basketball. The junior comes to the left, Viola deflected it. It got a piece of Stangus and ends up on a play. Lemonster gets a break on the near sideline. And of course, we've got to bring up this point. We've talked about it a little bit off air. We've got to bring it up here on air, and that is the sheer amount of basketball Lemonster is being expected to play. We've discussed it a little bit, I suppose, in some of our coverage throughout the last couple of weeks, but Lemester has played two games already. This is number three. They've got a tournament tomorrow, the Clark Replacement Tournament. The Worcester City Classic begins tomorrow as well. As Viola pulls up at the foul line, it rattles out. Encarnacion the rebound. Under two minutes to play, and Lemester still has the basketball. We call that a gauntlet, Todd. Indeed we do. Games in that Worcester City Tournament, potentially Saturday, Monday, Thursday, as Donna drives down the lane, jump, stop, float, and it goes down floor. McDonald completes a long touchdown potential, but there's an up and down, a traveling violation, and the ball will go back the other way. The QB saw a wide receiver on the break, Bill Thomas. Yeah, but Just got the, stuck with the up and down. The defensive back got in the way there before he got to the end zone. Trying to see was that uh, Chase uh, House that got in the way there, Haas, but uh, nice defense right there. Just stood up in his way. I think Dada was in front of him. Whoever it was, it was just great stay-at-home defense. Viola rips up a deep three, and it rattles out once again. And you can see Lemister reaching back for that deep three-point basket. They are just thrown off by the long court. They are not able to visually, I think, read in their periphery where they are at that arc. It's not for lack of being strong enough, but when you're having to reach back a little bit for that extra kick, things are hitting the rim a lot harder than normal. The drive through the lane this time. It was Ciccone backing down Hawes. He sets up Baker and Baker finishes under a minute before halftime. 10 point lead for Wachusett once again at 26-16. Right now, Lemonster nursing just another eight point quarter here with 45 seconds remaining. Hawes inside back out for Dada. Jumper from the right wing and down it goes. Make it double digits. About a five second differential shot clock to game clock. 30 seconds left here in this first half. McDonald brings the basketball slowly over the timeline from right to left. He'll drop it to Zingarella. Cross over Viola. Spin back top of the lane. This is Bates. Bates will snap it over for Zingarella. Zingarella driving on a double team. Tried the bounce inside. It's juggled and out of play by Bates in the Lemonster student section lets him hear about it. 25 minute half of this basketball game. 
8.25. We started 25 minutes ago. It has been a flamethrower time-wise. Lemonster's administration having a little bit of a struggle controlling their student section on the baseline as the officials have to push the fans back away from Bates. Back down floor, it's a jumper from the foul line. It will not go. Zingarella the rebound, and he will just hang on to it and hang on to a 26-18 halftime lead in a first half of basketball dominated by a quality Wachusett team and a Lemonster team that has looked completely lost for two quarters of basketball. Lost, but not out of it, uh, Todd and Kate. And, uh, you know, I think they got to uh, feel pretty good about themselves. Not about an 18-point half, but uh, only being down by eight. That is about the only good news, Bill Thomas, they can try to find. Coach Kevin Grutchfield has gone to the locker room and reached down deep in the well and rallied his troops after poor first half performances before. He's going to have to dig below the well on this halftime speech. K-Zone Game of the Week is brought to you by ROI Office Furniture and Systems, Sterling Rare Coin, Tom's Automotive, High Country Workwear, and Tariku Tractor. We thank you all so very much for your support of the K-Zone Game of the Week here on WPKZ. We've got so much more to come. Kate's first half stats, ugly on the one side, absolutely beautiful if you look at them on the other. We'll have them all for you after this timeout. 26-18, Wachusett on top of Lemonster at the half. A break and we're back with more. This is the Game of the Week on the K-Zone. Back to the Wellness Center at halftime here in Worcester tonight. The K-Zone game 
of the week. It's brought to you by Builder Surplus, a great selection of first quality building materials at prices you will like online at builders-surplus.com. You know what you need, get it at Builder Surplus for less. Halftime score here in the Midland Wachusett League Championship for Class A Boys Basketball. Wachusett with a 26-18 lead here in Worcester tonight. It has been a great first half of basketball for a Mountaineer team that has played phenomenally well throughout this season. 13-4 record coming in. Lemonster's record, not a slouch, of course. Pretty even at 13-2 as well. The difference is the Mountaineers have been playing to their ability. Lemonster's ability didn't arrive yet. They're going to need it in the second half, and I imagine Coach Crutchfield is in the locker room in search of it right now, challenging his team. Halftime here. Kate Stats are brought to you by Central Communication Systems, the experts at Central Communication Systems, the key provider for thousands of businesses around New England since 1991. Learn more at central-inc.com. Kate Central Communication Systems brings us your first half stats. All right, let's take a look at the Lemonster side of the ball first. Unfortunately, they start this game with just an eight-point first quarter. Second quarter, they get 10 points. So scoring right now at a premium if you're wearing the blue and white out there. Let's take a look at team totals first, however. 15 rebounds, no steals, nine turnovers for the Blue Devils. They shot 0 of 1 as a team from the line. Individual notable statistics for the Blue Devils. There are five different Blue Devils on the stat sheet right now. Justin Dada and Carr both have team high six points in the first half. Now, if we take a look at the Mountaineer side of the ball, eight rebounds, one steal, seven turnovers as a team. They shot two of five from the line. Individual notable statistics, Tucker McDonald, five points. Theo Stangus, a team high, 10 points, shooting two of five from the line. Bates has three, Chason has four, and Baker has four on his own as well. So right now, Lemonster struggling on that offensive end. Their defense continues to be pretty darn good. Right now, if you double up this 26-point score for Wachusett, you're still just in the low 50. So that is ideal defensively for Lemonster. The problem is every single time they go on offense, their eyes are either getting only one-shot opportunities or when they get opportunities, especially when they get layup opportunities, they're missing them. Indeed they have been, Kate. It has been an ugly first half from the offensive side of things been tough. for Lemonster and Bill Thomas's mid-game adjustments they're brought to you by score points Colonial Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram the team at Colonial Hudson is here to make your new or used car purchases or lease stress free online at Colonial Dodge Chrysler Jeep dot com Bill Thomas Colonial Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram of Hudson brings us your mid-game adjustments Score more points. <laughs> Kate, help me out. That a boy, <laughs> Bill Thomas. I, heard that I was paying before. attention. That no, a boy. I think, uh, I think what we saw in the defensive end, what you've been running a tough zone, uh, a 2-1-2 two, two, or a 2-3, and they're jumping out and everything, and hands up. And uh, taking away the passing lanes, there's been nothing on the baseline tonight. And when they have, when the Blue Devils have worked their ball in, the ball inside, they've been missing those easy ones around the rim. So they got to be a little more patient, get away from that perimeter around whichever line they want to stand around out there. Try to run that weak side, and uh, we saw Wachusett uh, making great use of the bounce pass, getting the ball inside, get a number of layups off the off the weak side, for, and uh, just look for those cutters. And I think that's what Lemons has got to do: open it up a little bit, and then maybe those outside shots will stop falling if they can get that defense for Wachusett to collapse in a little bit. Now, Todd and Billy, correct me if I'm wrong, considering what I've seen versus what you've seen. To me, this is the first game that we've seen Lemonster participate in where they have lacked nearly all intensity whatsoever. They do, they're, they're out there, they're present, but they really do look like they're going through the motions. Well, and I got to tell you, Kate, we saw it pregame. You alluded to it. I was paying attention to it. The fans under the, uh, the basket that Lemister was shooting, the Wachusett fans are in that first half, I think they were somewhat intimidated by him. You know, they, they, the players aren't going to admit it. You know, no. they were playing. Uh, we the didn't even know they were there. The bad aren't intimidated. But I mean, it, they're hard to ignore, and, yep. and we'll see how... Uh, how Lemons to respond shooting out to their own fans here in the second half if they can 
pick up the uh, intensity on the offensive end a little bit. The anticipated postseason dates. Everybody's wondering about this statewide playoff. That came out this week. And the look at the statewide playoff, it's brought to you by Great Road Farm and Garden. Get your gardening needs met locally at Great Road Farm and Garden on Great Road in Littleton. So for the MIAA state basketball playoff, the anticipated dates, the cutoff date for qualifying games is February 24th. That's coming up during this vacation week. Thursday, Kate? Thursday, Friday right? the 25th is when they make the decisions. Yes, and the seeds will be released. The statewide seeding release will be on February 26th. That is Saturday. The preliminary rounds, that would be any play-in games required in order to get you down from the 32 plus that will qualify. Those play-in rounds will be from February 28th to March 2nd. The round of 32 will be contested between March 3rd and 5th. Round of 16, March 7 through 9. Round of 8, March 10 through 12. The final four, March 14 through 16, with the state championships to be contested this winter, March 18 through 20. And if you play a spring sport, then March 21, tryouts start. Indeed they do. And away we go. Here comes the second half of basketball. lemon has got the ball. Can they find some offense? They go right to left here in this third quarter. 26-18 is Wachusett's lead as we start the second half. Viola snaps it to Dada. Baseline left, come back to Viola. He has to pull up, then ends up splitting the defense down the lane. He had it taken away from him. Out of play, the ball will stay on Lemonster's end, but just four seconds to shoot. They're going with a straight baseline stack. The inbound was tipped, and it was out of play. Dada had not, excuse me, Carr had not made it all the way back in bounds across the baseline, touched the basketball, whistled out of play. It's a turnover, ball back to the Mountaineers. Not a good way to start the half. That's difficult too, because that's a mental error right there, and that's difficult if you're the coaching staff to let go, especially after what we we're assuming was an impassioned halftime speech from Coach Kevin Grutchfield. And 45 seconds into this third quarter, and a block is called on the discard as Carr is taken out of the play and got run over by Chasen, they whistle it a block. Carr was standing there for about five seconds before any move was made. Got run over, and I don't blame him for looking around. Bates snaps it in the corner for Stangus. The left corner three, buries it. That's his third three of the night. And the Mountaineers open the second half scoring. 56 seconds into the second half, it's 29-18. Just like they opened the first half. Dada swings it around, going to the right. Puts it inside Viola, finds Carr at the foul line, pops the jumper from the foul line, and hits another one from that location tonight, and brings Lemister to the 20 mark, cuts the Wachusett lead to nine. Lemister with the full court pressure. Trying to disrupt the offense. Yeah, as Bates pirouettes across the timeline, still with possession. Tiptoed with that. Chasen into the corner for Stangus. Cross-court skip, put it in the hands of Bates. Bates for McDonald, and he walked with it. Ball back to Lemonster. Got him that time, Kate. 29-20, Wachusett's lead. Just one basket from the field between these two schools, about a minute and a half into this third quarter. Personnel issues out on the floor. Baker will come out for the Mountaineers, as will Stangus. And into the basketball game comes Ciccone. Coach Gibbons says of Nick Ciccone, the senior, six foot two, he can change games for us as Viola pulls up for a three from the left side and delivers, and the lead is just six at 29-23. This is one of those things that we talked about about uh, Lemonster. They can get into a rut, but when they turn things on, they have that quick strike capability. So even though it seems like they had an abysmal first half, they're very talented, especially along the perimeter, and they can make up a lot of points in a very short amount of time. The and their defense has been prolific right the there. Giveaway inside, Dada with the pick. Picked right back by Bates. Bates will throw the lay-in up. It was bothered, and Dada's got the rebound. 
Dada will dribble it out of trouble. Three on two on his way up the floor. Taken out from behind and into the student section. Down goes Ciccone as he landed hard on the floor. His teammates stand in there. Administration pushes the Lemonster fans back. 5.27 to play in the third quarter. It's 29-23, Wachusett's lead. They're gonna have to send Ciccone off for one play. A little tough foul. action under the basket foul there. Foul not posted. Did they just have that out of bounds? Well, they didn't yeah, post a just, foul. Yeah, there was they, no foul. They have that out of play. Okay. It's Lemonster basketball. Right Viola over, gets depleted. <laughs> by McDonald. Okay. I shall just erase it and forget. The NBA has proven this week. That was nothing. We've <laughs> also seen it this week. That's Apparently okay. you can be depleted and still they have no call. Things happen. Zingarella spins out of trouble. It's a physical game, Todd. Indeed Come it is. It, uh, hey, <laughs> I love physical basketball. Don't get me started talking about the you know classic Big East. That's why I'm up here. Indeed. Here's the drive down the line. This is McDonald. The drive from the left. The lay-in is good. 31-23. McDonald will add to the Mountaineer lead. Blue Devils running an extended man-to-man, -man, but uh, you gotta you gotta cover up when somebody breaks into the lane like that. You gotta break off your guy. Help out on defense. Asias, nice spin move into the lane, and it's an offensive foul. That's a rough one. Bates had planted his feet, and Asias spun wildly into him and dropped him on his back. That'll be his second team second of the second half for the Blue Devils. And this is going to be one of those where Lemonster fans start to point and go, well, on the other end of the floor, you had that as a block off of a pass. This was a shot attempt. And now Coach Gibbons' squad, seven seconds coming up the floor in the backcourt. He'll spend the timeout with 23 to shoot at the 427 mark of the third quarter and a 31-23 Wachusett lead in this mid-watch Class A Boys Basketball Championship. And Todd, correct me if, if you think I'm wrong, and, and you may very well. We've been seeing the frustration with Lemonster kind of at a, at a simmer all evening long because multiple aspects of their game not necessarily working for them. Their defense still doing a, a, a good job. Nobody's really in foul trouble, but offensively it's as if nothing has really worked. They're not out, they're not rebounding well. They've got a lot of turnovers on offense and right now fouls starting to add up and like you said, things seem a little topsy-turvy in the foul situation and you're seeing that frustration starting to really come to a more than a simmer. It's starting to boil just a little bit. And so Lemonster's gonna need to keep their wits about them because they play their best basketball when they maintain their composure. And Kevin Garchfield has talked about it. When they play their systematic game, that's when they play their best. When they go too intense, when they go off the rails, when they play a little bit too impassioned, that's when things get sloppy. And coming south of Sterling has been Lemonster's kryptonite this year. Their two losses at Wachusett, at Worcester North. So you just got to stay above, you got to stay above West Boylston. More or less, yes. Okay. Not where most of the playoff games are going to be contested. <laughs> As the action resumes out of the timeouts. We can go to the gym at West Boylston, the Lions. I was going to say, that's a tight little band box. <laughs> Left to right, the ball goes up the floor. Bates undershoots, catches the underside of the rim. Carr with a good defense. Back down floor, this is Asias with the baseline drive. Taken out of his hands, recovered, got it back up! Count the basket for Asias, and a foul! Nice follow right there, his own shot, stayed with it, but I tell you, there was a lot of trees hanging over him. Nice patience right there to let him get by a little bit. What's it back up? Billy Thomas, you you bring up a great point as well. That's the other thing. Wachusett always known for their height, their size. Lemonster with Asias completing the three-point play is in a 31-26 game at the halfway point of the third quarter. That's a five-point lead, the closest they have been since, what, 7-0, Kate, early in the basketball since game? 7-0, that's correct. They went on a 13-0 run, did Wachusett to open up this game. That That'll one be swatted down. It was deflected by the defense. McDonald could recover it in the backcourt. He'll bring it back left to right. Hand off underneath. This one went from Bates to Stangus. Jacks up the three and delivers another. He's got the hot hand That's from behind the perimeter. Right That's a dagger. Great defense by Lemonster. They find a way to stick a three. Just said, you wonder how far do we have to push these guys back before they become ineffective? 
Drive down the baseline, there's a foul whistle. Two shots coming up for Donna at the line. Of Theo Stangus, Coach Gibbons said he's a high academic kid. He's looking at joining the Jumbos. He wants to be at Tufts University when next year comes along. He is the, or was at the time, Coach Gibbons sent me this email back on January 20th. He was the mid-watch leader in three-point field goals. Noticeably why. Can't imagine why. You know, Kay, you talk about the uh, Wachusett hitting their threes and uh, limits are trying to push them out, but that just opens up the inside and uh, we've seen what great passes that Wachusett has and they're not afraid to work that bounce pass and get those easy looks under the basket. Dada hits a pair, 34-28, 3-10 mark in the pass. third. He can do it all. Chasen for Zingarella. Right back to Chase and they play catch. Zingarella gets it back, throws up the three from deep, doesn't go. Viola's got the rebound. He's racing out in front of the break, three on two if they hurry. It's Dada, juggled, found a C as triple team closes. Kick back Encarnacion for Dada and Lemonster tries to balance the floor. As Dada will bring it all the way back out to the half circle on their side of the timeline. For those, Th oh pardon me, go No, ahead. no worries, comes to Viola left. Viola creates some space at the foul line, puts it in the hands of a C as eight to shoot. This is Dada. Come left for Viola. Foul line drive with five to shoot. Taken out of his hands by Chasen. Dada gets an opportunity, throws it up at the shot clock buzzer, down to the floor, battle for the loose ball. Everyone trying to get a handle on it. And somehow, Kevin Viola dribbles it out of trouble. Wow. He can fit into small spaces, that one. And he found his way out of it as well to safety. Lemonster with another opportunity on this possession, 18 to shoot, 2-12 mark of the third quarter. Item missing from this game right now, Justin Dada has had to take over the scoring for Lemonster in the last few matchups that they've been in, and right now he's not been able to take control of the offensive end for Lemonster thus far. Asias throws up the three with four to shoot, not the best shot of the possession. McDonald's got the rebound and he's out on the break. He finds some space through the lazy Lemonster defense on that progression, and he will lay it in and good. Lemonster failed to get back after the giveaway. Playing defense with their hands and not with their feet, Todd and Kate. McDonald gives up his body so, like, just flagrantly at times. Carr, foul line again, and he delivers. <laughs> Team high 10 points for Carr to so far in this night. Lead is still 6, 36-30, just under the 90-second mark here of the third quarter. And McDonald with the basketball, half court to the right. This is going to be another low scoring affair, gents. Indeed it is. Three away from Chasen is off the mark left. Zingarella tried to keep it alive on the baseline right. He was just out of play. Whistle comes down, it goes back to Lemonster. 109 to play in the third quarter, 36-30. Can Lemonster get inside of five points before the fourth quarter begins? Viola will find Asias. Asias for Encarnacion. Come left this time. This is Dada into the corner. Finds Viola, throws up a three. Hard in and out. McDonald the uncontested rebound. McDonald goes down floor long, finds Zingarella. Skids to a stop, but with the dribble. Nice play by Zingarella. He'll keep it alive, send it back to Chasen and rebalance the floor with 18 to shoot. Into the corner. Across they go. Find their way back to Zingarella through Bates. Bates gets it back. Foul line. Now into the corner. Back to Bates. Three up from the right side. And delivers another. 39-30. Shot clock off here in the third quarter. And that brings the Badlands back into the basketball game. Been a pretty quiet third quarter from both student sections. Mm -hmm. Late returning from the concessions. <laughs> this is Viola, four seconds left in the third. Kick back Dada, throws this one up at the buzzer. Short off the front rim, three quarters in the books from the Wellness Center on the campus of Worcester State University tonight. K-Zone game of the week, the Midland Wachusett League Boys Basketball Class A Championship. 39-30. Through three quarters, second seeded Mountaineers on top of the top seeded Blue Devils. Wachusett on top of Lemonster through three. Well, Thomas, Wachusett extends their lead by one point in that quarter. They had the eight point lead at the half, now a nine point lead. And Lemonster on the verge of creating a one possession game right there, but uh, a couple of turnovers and a couple of timely baskets by the Mountaineers stretch that lead out to nine as the quarter ended. Kate's third quarter stats brought to you by Marigal Medical, a physical medicine clinic in Lemonster, providing care and treatment to patients of all ages. Online at marigalmedical.com. 
All right, if we take a look at the stats for this half, Lemonster squeaking back into this one in the third quarter. Again, a nine-point lead right now for Wachusett, but a manageable situation for Lemonster. Right now, Dada with eight points. Carr with a team-high 10. We're used to seeing Dada's point totals, especially in the last two matchups, much higher. Right now on Wachusett's side of the ball, Tucker McDonald has 10 points, and right now Theo Stangus has a team-high 16 points with four made three-point shots on the evening. Marigal Medical brings us Kate's third quarter stats. Bill Thomas, your chance to make a final adjustment here. It's brought to you by Liberty Supply Inc. Liberty Supply Incorporated, the home of service, the way it used to be. Well, they gotta find a way the Blue Devils do to solve that uh, zone defense that the Mountaineers have been throwing at them. You know, they, uh, at this point, they're almost begging him to shoot three-pointers and uh, nothing inside for the Blue Devils. They gotta find a way to work the ball inside, get some easy baskets, turn the momentum around. Mountaineers start with the basketball, going left to right here in quarter four. Bates gets the ball back, come to McDonald. Triple threat position, decides to drive. They say it's a tie-up, even though it's a shoulder block, and down goes McDonald. The alternate possession is Lemonster basketball, and McDonald is mouth agape, as is coach Tom Gibbons, who's calling the foul from the bench. He's got a good argument there. Nobody touched the basketball. Oh, Todd never had his hands on the ball. I don't know how that ended up as a tie-up, but we'll take it. That's an Ivan Putsky <laughs> shoulder block from the old WWE days. Blue Devils got to string a couple of baskets together here early on in this quarter. Viola and Asias playing catch. McDonald gets the foot in there. It's kicked out of play. So they'll reset the shot clock to 20 seconds. 7.18 to play here in the fourth. And Coach now Gibbons there's a conversation. A getting a question in. They reset it to 20, which would be the reset mark at the college level for a kicked ball. Okay. It's a 15 second reset in high school in Massachusetts. Honest mistake. Indeed. Viola jacks up a three from deep, front rim short. Lemonster still content to take those deep threes. And Stangus gets the basketball in the right corner. He slipped, it's called the walk, and the ball will go back to Lemonster. That's an unforced error. Yeah, your point well taken. Those deep threes are not paying off for the Blue Devils tonight, and uh, I'd love to see them work their way inside and maybe pick up a foul or two on the Mountaineers, but nothing happening. Good interior defense by the Mountaineers tonight. They're getting bit a little bit by that deep three-point line as Encarnacion got bothered on the shot. It's short off the front rim. Another one-shot possession for Lemonster, who trails by nine at the 645 mark of the fourth quarter in this championship game. Bates swings back to the left, puts it in the hands of Zingarella, who spins to the foul line. Drop it off for Ciccone. Ciccone splits two defenders. The jump stop was a walk. The feet were still moving. It's called a jump stop, and he just kept progressing through that one. It's a travel call on the ball. We'll go back to Lemonster. And now before the inbound, Coach Kevin Grutchfield says, now's the time for a timeout. We need to get a plan. 6.32 to play here in the fourth quarter. 39-30, Wachusett on top of Lemonster. The K-Zone Game of the Week is brought to you by Clear Path for Veterans New England by Northeast Insurance. Clear Path for Veterans supports families with connections to the latest in wellness options. We owe it to them to do our part. Donate now at clearpathne.org. This message brought to you by Northeast Insurance Agency. Game of the Week also brought to you by the One Stop Shop. For all your comic book and video game needs, there's only one stop. And the Game of the Week brought to you by Walker Orthodontics, a pioneer in advanced airway orthodontics online at drwalker.com. Your first step to a better night's sleep starts with Walker Orthodontics. Now, Todd and Billy, if I were to tell you that the girls' matchup that happened before this one was going to be higher scoring, by the end of the game, would you have believed me? Other than the fact that you knew Wachusett's girls were playing in that matchup, but would you have believed me that that game was going to be higher scoring? And right now with 88 seconds into this fourth quarter, neither team has scored from the field. The statistics are not near as deeply kept as they used to be. But let's face facts. In the three-point era of basketball at this the high school level, scoring. this is an incredibly low-scoring basketball. Yeah, I agree. 
And it's what's, it's been Lemonster's saving grace. And it's been a season of lowered averages is yes. what it has been I mean, all year long. Coach Kevin, Kevin Grudgefield has made no, no bones about it. This is a defensive team in Lemonster. Back to action, Asias, the baseline drive. He dished to Encarnacion, shot goes up, but the whistle goes off. It's a trembling violation against Encarnacion, and the turnover goes back to Wachusett. Quicksand continues. Viola getting really scrappy out there now going up against Chasen. Still playing with those two fouls though, I think. Tate hasn't picked up a third. You're very much correct. You might as well get after it. Oh. Notice Blue Devils have changed up their defense now. have gone to a 2-1-2 zone. Try to jump out on those three-point attempts. And, and that's not gonna there. help as Nick Ciccone jacks up a three and drives another one home. That's the first shot from the field for either team in the fourth quarter with 5.50 remaining. And the longer that keeps happening, it only favors Wachusett. Asias with the no knee bend three-pointer. That is well short of the mark and out of play and the ball will go back Once again, to Wachusett. And deep threes. I'm not keeping stats, but I think Wachusett scored the first points of every quarter tonight. Oh, well, Billy, I don't got that one. You got that stat, No, Kate? I don't have that one. <laughs> I know they scored the first 13 of the game. Yeah. I can tell you that much. Left to right comes McDonald. He lost the handle, and Asias took it away, then lost it again. Nice dive on the floor by McDonald to keep it alive for the Mountaineers. Mountaineers resettle the basketball. 24 to shoot on the possession. Five and a quarter left here in the fourth quarter. Drop it back to the top. It's Zingarella at the half circle. Now steps up to the arc. And he's called for the palm. The ball will go back the other way on the traveling violation. It is not like the Mountaineers have played unbeatable basketball, particularly here in the second half. The lead has never been insurmountable. But is there just not enough time left? Lemonster has the basketball. Half court left, this is Viola. To Moisen in the right corner, right back to Viola with 13 to shoot. Viola now around the corner to the right baseline. Jacks a pass out, tapped softly by Zingarella into the hands of McDonald. McDonald with a little dribble entry looking for Chasen and it ends up in the hands of Dada. Teams exchange turnovers. Dada back from right to left up floor. Four and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Lemonster continues to play catch, befuddled offensively, and Viola, foul line pass, into the scorer's table and out of play, missing the intended target of Dada with the no look. Yeah, Dada getting ready to crash towards the boards there. Kevin trying to hit him on an outlet pass there, looking for a three-point attempt. Not on the same page tonight, Todd and Kate. Indeed they are not. Something is just a little amiss on that Lemonster side of things. This is Ciccone with a handoff for McDonald at the foul line. He'll step back with 15 to shoot at just about the halfway mark of this fourth quarter. McDonald, drive, right side of the lane. Kick back out through Bates, then Chasen. Cues up Bates for three, and delivers. Those last two threes from the field for Wachusett have started to open things up. It was a nine point lead going into the quarter. Lemonster with no points right now in the fourth quarter with 3.42 remaining. Dada comes right back down floor, right side of the arc, and he delivers a men's college basketball three-pointer at the three and a half minute mark of the fourth quarter. Dada with an, a team high 11 points in the game for Quite, Lemonster. A quiet 11, I might add. Quite. 45-33, Wachusett's lead of the 3.20 mark of the fourth. Asias tries to press the action with McDonald. McDonald spins through the lane, he juggled it. They're gonna call it a held ball as he did not have possession of the ball. They're gonna keep possession. They reset the shot clock. The alternate possession, yes, does favor Wachusett. And now there's a conversation between the two officials in the, lead, excuse me, the trail and center positions that are behind the play. They're gonna put eight seconds on the shot clock. They're gonna say that was not a loss of possession. That was just a fumble out of, out of bounds, I, it looked like. They called uh, it a held ball. Crazy possession right there. Five to shoot, McDonald with the ball. Two to shoot, get tapped away into the open floor. Stangus corrals it, but that's a shot clock violation. The ball will go back to Lemonster at the 3.07 mark of the fourth quarter. Todd and Billy, the clock just struck, nine o'clock. 3.07 remaining in the game. 
And although things started just a little early, just before 8 o'clock, it was not exceedingly early by any stretch of the imagination. This has been a blistering, just clock evaporation. And you look Indeed at the it has been. lack of call fouls, too. Viola finds Carr. Wasn't able to get it on the first opportunity, but Carr's follow on of his own shot. Lay in is good. The lead is still 10 for Wachusett. Timeout taken by Lemonster. 2.52 to play. Here in the fourth quarter, it's 45 35. Wachusett with the lead here on the K-Zone Game of the Week. And it's brought to you by Airport Auto Parts. A second generation of automotive recyclers provides the best in customer experience. Online at airportautoparts.com. The Game of the Week brought to you by Cinema World. Experience more of what you love at a place you love. That's Cinema World in Fitchburg. The way the movies were meant to be seen on the silver screen. Ditto on that point. And the K-Zone Game of the Week brought to you by Game On Sports and Performance Center in Fitchburg, where the game is always on. It's Game On Fitchburg. Call 978-956-4111 or go to GameOnFitchburg.com to book your sports getaway today. Saw out on the Twitterverse today, Game On Sports and Performance Center playing host to the sectional tournament of the MIAA Wrestling State playoff that is going on at game on sports and performance center in fitchburg they had some great images online from the miaa's account it's at miaa 033 if you check it out online and they had borrowed mats from schools in all the surrounding oh, areas neat. it was a really neat like uh, pattern we'll call it a kind of apache looking pattern out there all the different school colors that loaned them all across this massive indoor game on sports and performance center and it's right there in fitchburg I bet that was a hoot to try to tra uh, transport those. <laughs> no doubt about it. Those aren't small or light. As we resume to action, the giveaway from Jason. Viola right to left on the break. He'll lay it in and good. Viola up to seven points. Two and a half to play in the fourth. 45-37. The lead dwindling again for Wachusett. It's eight. lemonster has been as close as five in the second half, and that's as close as they've gotten. McDonald with the basketball in the left hand dribble. A little underhand shovel for Ciccone, right back to McDonald with 12 to shoot. Now 10, this is Bates. Bates drives the left side of the lane, went with the right hand shot, too hard off glass. Rebound for Racias, Viola almost fell out of his shoes. He'll end up squaring up, gets the ball. Drive through the foul line, interior pass for Hawes, waited for the defensive blow by, drew the contact from McDonald, and Hawes was hit in the act of shooting. He's got two shots at the foul line. One of the things Lemonster's doing a nice job of, you have their typical strong defense. Wachusett not able to take an opportunity there, and then Lemonster coming back, able to get the foul on this end. Right now, Lemonster is going to need to take every opportunity on every offensive possession. They're gonna need points in order to make this one close again. Hawes is first from the line, will fall. 45-38 at the 158 mark of the fourth quarter. One more free throw opportunity for Chase Hawes. Make this a two possession game right here, very important free throw. Big time, Haas big possession. bends down deep into the mango sorbet high tops. They get the back rim, it will not go. There's foul on the rebounding action, and Carnacion is whistled for coming over the back of Bates. That gets called a lot on him because he has such prolific vertical leaping capability. As well as his size, Kate, on the yep. inside. It dominates most of the post players he plays up against. Into the front court comes Zingarella. Coach Tom Gibbons, timeout. 1.47 to play here in the fourth quarter. 45-38 is Wachusett's lead here on the Key Zone Game of the Week as well as here on RFM. And hey, just because it's April Vacation Week doesn't April, mean... April? Oh, excuse April? April Vacation Week? It's April. Excuse me. You just made my day. I know. How about that, huh? February. <laughs> I just got vacation. so excited. Well, you would do some tabulations. Probably not. It's February. <laughs> it's February Vacation Week. Excuse me. <laughs> and because we're right there, see, I'll tell you why this is a problem. RFM's got more basketball coming up. It's Air Shirley playing host to Lemister's girls basketball team. Yeah. It's Tuesday night. Ignoring the graphic that says that's February 1st, it is actually February 22nd. Got so it. we'll have that action for you a quarter after five on Tuesday, February 22nd, and a 5.30 tip-off 
and that action will be here on RFM. Lemonster and Air Shirley, girls basketball. For Proud being completely wrong, the Proud graphic looks good. Proud I mean, all things considered, <laughs> as the case may be. Our friends at the K-Zone may join us as well. All that to be determined as the week progresses. Just depends on how much fun they want to have on vacation I was going to say, on a vacation week. And of course, if you've enjoyed the action, you want to relive this one or any of the other, great action on RFM. It's facebook.com slash media rivalry for the live action, tinyurl.com slash media rivalry or youtube.com. Search Rivalry Family Media for your RFM archive. Oh, man. As oh, Zingarella tries to put it in the hands of McDonald, he splays out across the baseline and he's up a little gimpy. That was a full on body attack to try to keep that ball in play. Nice. And he wasn't able to hang on, Kate. Not, not able to hang on. Uh, he was lucky he was able to hang on to his head. <laughs> Indeed. So one tangled, tangled up with a CS there, too, a little My bit. Word. But, uh, yeah, really committed to that. I've never, I mean, I mean, I certainly have seen players give up their body with reckless abandon, but he seems to do it just with some pizzazz. With a smile. <laughs> Final 90 seconds here of the fourth quarter. Lemonster chasing a 45-38 Wachusett lead. Asias jump stop in the lane, finds Hawes, makes the body contact, oh, no whistle, man. shot is off the mark, Ciccone the rebound. Worried for right Warren Asias right there. Yeah, and McDonald had his eyes on Asias. He was running left to right, but yet his head was going right to left as he was working his way up the floor. Lemonster's defense needs to come up big here under a minute to go. Final minute of regulation and Asias has to give the foul as McDonald was content to sit there deep out and just let the clock as the sands run out of the hourglass. We're gonna see a couple more of these too. Lemonster's still got two fouls to give. Asias picks up his third. Nobody for the Blue Devils in foul trouble yet. Bates will find McDonald in the backcourt, and Asias has to give the foul. Asias now with four fouls. So they're going to have to change who's defending McDonald, because of course, you're going to get it in the hands of your playmaker, and if Asias keeps following him, He's gone. he will be out of this basketball game. Haas is going to defend the inbound. It will go to McDonald and Dada will step up to defend McDonald and give the foul at 51 and 3 tenths seconds left here in the fourth quarter. That's Dada's first team six, so we've got one more. Dada will do that one more time. 45-38 is Wachusett's lead. And hey, make no mistake about it, I don't want this lost somewhere in the conversation. Because this is a two seed over a one seed, conventionally in sports you'd call that an upset. This was not an upset. This was a battle of two one seeds, a 13 and two team against a 13 and four team two very, very much one seeds in this Midland Wachusett League tournament. They were clearly the best two teams in the Midland Wachusett Class A. They got here together to play one another, and the team that played best tonight thus far, with 49 and 6 tenths left here in the fourth quarter, has been the Mountaineers, without question, from, from starting Dolphin. gate, and they are down the home stretch heading to the finish line. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you, uh, Todd and Kate. Uh, Mountaineers came out firing on, uh, you know, you want to say all eight, but they, were, they they found a couple extra cylinders tonight. They were running a 10-cylinder motor. And uh, they just kept the, the pressure on and got the, the key baskets when they needed to. McDonald could not convert on the one-plus opportunity. So down floor comes Asias on the drive, and the grab is called on Ciccone as Asias drives by. 43 and 3 tenths seconds left here in the fourth and a 45-38 Wachusett lead and the fans casually start heading to the exit. I'm sure Bayheim would love that in the carrier. No though. kidding, as Asias drives the lane, basket's good and a foul. Not over yet. Indeed no. it is not, somebody no better flag good. them. There's no re-entry. Somebody should tell <laughs> them to maybe think about it before they cross the exit. Bye, bye bye. Oh. 38 and a 10th left here in the fourth quarter. A five point game. Chason picks up his third team fifth. Still the closest Lemonster has been in the second half. Can Asias bring them closer to four? He cannot. Free throw is short. McDonald races down the rebound. Dada tried to defend it and he is able to do it and force coach Tom Gibbons to spend a timeout. 35 and four tenths seconds left here in regulation. 45-40 Wachusett's lead. Lemons in position to trap right there, just couldn't get another defender over. Still time. Key zone game of the week brought to you by Lemonster Monument, the home of quality craftsmanship for over 40 years at Lemonster Monument Company. Memories are forever online at lemonstermonument.com. K-Zone Game of the Week brought to you by Daewoo North Superstore. At Daewoo North, find the perfect car you deserve 
price to fit your budget online at Daewoo Superstore. Dot com. Coming up post game, we'll have a recap of it all here for you on the K Zone as well as here on RFM tonight. And then we will wrap things up and send you off to the good night as we continue on this K Zone game of the week on a Friday night on the doorstep of February vacation. Yes, just February. Well done, sir. <laughs> Great to have you along with us here tonight on the Game of the Week. High above courtside in this absolutely gorgeous arena at the Wellness Center. They call it the competition gym here on campus, but it is absolutely an arena environment. You've got the uh, walkway that surrounds the gym from above. We are up on said walkway looking down over the arena floor below. And it's been a great night of basketball here as Encarnacion gets whistled for the foul as Ciccone tries to dribble to safety. Encarnacion picks up his second, that'll be teammate. Yeah, I concur, Todd and Kate, great facility here and there's nothing uh, like getting involved in that college level atmosphere that you get when you come to a, to a gymnasium of this caliber. It was one of the things that the athletic directors were concerned would be lost those legendary years and days of the district championship played at that beautiful Harrington Gymnasium just up the road at WPI. And then over the last couple of years held at this brand new facility here at Worcester State. And now able to bring it back with this Midland Wachusett League tournament as Ciccone is at the line trying to finish this one out. Hits the first, makes it a six point game at 46-40 Wachusett. Let's make it a three possession game if he's able to hit. And the second one rattles down to a fist pump as well. 47-40. About a second and a half differential shot clock to game clock. Hawes missed the lay-in. The rebound for Zingarella. Hawes has to give the foul. The applause begins. The frustration all over the face of Lemonster right now. But this is academic at 27 and 3 tenths left. And the Mountaineers up by seven. Hey, Lemonster did a good job sticking around, but just couldn't get that key basket. You know, they had it down as low as five a couple of times, but Mountaineers found a way to create a turnover, come back and stick a basket or two, spin that lead to double digits, and here we are. Zingarella couldn't finish the lay-in. Asias crashed the rebound. Out of play. Mountaineers keep the basketball. Shot clock off. 26 and 2 tenths left before the Mountaineers can call themselves the inaugural Class A champion of the Midland Wachusett League Tournament. And Carnacion gives the foul result. to Chasen. <laughs> Stop the clock with 24 and 7 tenths at this point. Game of the week here on the K Zone is brought to you by Viola's Fitchburg Tire, Harvard Outdoor Power, Jarvis Ford, and Rhino Linings of Lemonster. And of course, your week of action here on the K Zone will continue with the most live games throughout the weekend. And your high school action wraps up this Sunday. Howie Kahn and the Scholastic Sports Zone crew, Tommy Santasania and Dan Bolak, along with a myriad of guests, will join Howie and crew Sunday. Trip. Indeed it is. 11 to noon right here on the K Zone. AM 1280 and 105.3 FM and WPKZStream.com. Zingarella's second will go down. Casillas back down the floor, will hit the lay-in. Spend the time out at 17 and 1 tenth left. 48-42, Wachusett on top of Lemonster. So here we are, here's the question. Where, where are you at, where do you go if you're Lemonster? Well, you know you go to play Doherty tomorrow night at Worcester North as part of the Worcester City Classic, the beginning of the next tournament that Lemonster will participate in during this February vacation week before you even consider the statewide playoff but the question is, how do you regroup from here? Because this could force a Lemonster team into a spiral game. I mean, item number one, regardless of the outcome of this one, Coach Gretchfield's post-game chat is going to have to be short because they have to get back on a bus, get back up to Lemonster, they have to get home, and they need to get some sleep because right now at 9.15, they're likely not getting out of here until around 9.30, 9.45, and they're not getting home until after 10 o'clock, which means 
they're going to need to get some sleep. They're going to need to get some rest. And they're going to need to find a way to regroup and rebound on incredibly short notice. That's a 3 o'clock tip-off tomorrow for Lemonster and Doherty at Worcester North. You might as well just sleep here. The Worcester City Classic. I was going to say a hotel room might have been in order. <laughs> at least they did them some favors. Wasn't that originally scheduled for 1030? I, I believe it was at then one point in time. 1030, then rolled up and back and There's forth. a lot of great high school basketball in the city of Worcester this weekend. This there tournament is. continues in Class B and C throughout the weekend, boys and girls. And then you got the Worcester City Classic that is replacing the Clark Tournament this year. As the action continues on the floor, Ciccone gets the inbound. Lemonster gives the foul out of the timeout. 14 and a half seconds left here in the fourth. 48-42, Wachusett's lead. Long two and a half minutes. Indeed, it has been. More fouls in these two and a half minutes than we had in the first three and a half quarters. The first one will not go for Ciccone. There will be no question that teams in central Massachusetts will be battle tested as these Midwatch schools and these Swickle schools have beat up on each other throughout this new look regular season and they're going to continue to beat up on each other all the way through that deadline of February 24th to submit your points in games to qualify for the MIA statewide playoff. The question will be how is your cardio development to be able to recover and play in said statewide playoff? As Dada and everyone else misses a lay-in opportunity, Dada with about four opportunities will get one to fall, add two more points, but it does not change the result. Tucker McDonald and team celebrate. Wachusett is the winner of the inaugural Class A Midland Wachusett League Tournament Championship by a 49-44 score, and that score sounds a heck of a lot closer than this game ever was. It felt, it felt like a double-digit game all the way, Todd and Kate, and, and you're right, looking at the uh, five-point difference in, uh, at the buzzer, uh, in no way does it feel like it was that close of a game. Watch, you said dominated every aspect of the game, and and uh, just the fact that Lemonster battled back to keep it on double digits at the end, I think is a, a testament to never giving up, but uh, they can never get over that hump. A wire-to-wire -wire Mountaineer victory here on the campus of Worcester State tonight at the Wellness Center. Game of the Week here on the K-Zone is brought to you by LeBlanc's Collision Center. You have the right to choose your auto body repair company, and LeBlanc's of Fitchburg is committed to helping you. 51 River Street in Fitchburg and online at LeBlanc'sAutoBodyRepair.com. We're going to regroup and reset here. But before we do, the presentations are going to go on down on the floor. Jay Costa representing the Midland Wachusett League athletic directors are going to present the Midland Wachusett League Class A championship plaque to the captains of Wachusett. And they will step out and grab it. That includes Ciccone. That includes Stangus. And that includes Bates three seniors on this Mountaineer program as they lay claim to the pack. And now athletic director Tanya Rich of Neshoba steps out to take the winning photograph of the inaugural Midland Wachusett League Class A Boys Basketball Championship. We're going to continue on. We step aside. Final break here, and then we're going to have our post game next. Kate will recap the entire action and all the final numbers for you here inside the rec center at Worcester State tonight. So much more to come. Don't you dare go away. Stay with us here on RFM. Stay with us here as we continue. More action to come on the K-Zone and RFM as we continue tonight. Wachusett is the Class A Midland Wachusett League champion by a 49-44 win over Lemonster tonight. So much more to come. Stand by. We're back with more. This is the Game of the Week on the K-Zone.
Now a quiet gym as you are here in Worcester tonight at the Wellness Center at Worcester State University. And what a night it has been here for the inaugural Midland Wachusett League Championship. A great night of action. Wachusett's girls team picks up a win earlier on tonight. And then their boys team follows suit as they top Lemonster with a 40 excuse me, 49-44 win tonight here on the K-Zone Game of the Week. Post-game brought to you by Acme Carpet One. There's lots of pros and cons in the flooring business, and these are the pros online at acmecarpetone.com. Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins, and you, DJ Derek Drown, back at Master Control, pushing the buttons and making the magic happen along with the rest of the K-Zone family. It's great to have you along with us here tonight on another dandy here on the Game of the Week, but maybe the first time... Lemonster, at the very least, in games we've been looking at, looked completely overmatched. And that was from start to finish tonight. It was a struggle from the word go. It's one of those things, Kate, one of our favorite movies. You ever been on a sure thing and the horse, horse gets, gets a cramp? cramp. Mm, kind of looked like that kind of night for Lemonster. Out of the gates. The gates opened. And maybe their door never did, as uh, it was a struggle tonight to get them to a 49-44 loss in this one. Kate's going to walk us through all those stats, and they're brought to you by our friends at Bank Hometown. Bank Hometown's free checking account works for you. Visit BankHometown.com or stop into their convenient Lemonster branch on Sack Boulevard. Bank Hometown, member FDIC. Kate? All right, Get out the tabulation method. Bank take, Hometown brings you the numbers. Take, take a look at the Lemonster Blue Devils side of things first. Team totals, 25 rebounds, one steal, 17 turnovers for the Blue Devils. They shot four of seven from the line. Individual notable statistics for Lemonster. Kevin Viola ends his night with seven points. Warren Asias with nine. Dada ends his night with a team high 13. And Carnacion ends his night with two. Carr ends his night with 12, which may be a season high for him. Hawes ends his night with one point. We take a look on the Mountaineer side of the ball. Team total 16 rebounds, one steal, 19 turnovers. They shot six of 13 as a team from the line. McDonald ends his night with 10 points. Stangus ends his night with a team high 16 points coming off of four made three-point shots. Bates ends his night with nine points. Chasen ends his night with four. Ciccone ends his night with six but he shot three of four from the line, and Zingarella ends his night with one point. And that was a defensive battle on both sides of the ball. When the score is lower scoring than the girls' game that preceded you, now mind you, the Wachusett girls are a prolific scoring offense, so that's absolutely nothing to shake a stick at. But when the boys' game with two high-powered teams comes in, and they are both reduced to sub 50 point scoring on the night. That's saying something, that's for sure. And it underscored the rate that these two teams had played in their previous two meetings. It was back in December. Wachusett's win at home was 54 52. And then Wachusett lost on the road at Lemonster. So the Lemonster win came in the waning seconds back in January 21st at home, 53 52. And tonight, 49 44, Wachusett wins the third meeting between these two schools in this regular season. Action here on the K-Zone brought to you by Dorico's Market, a full-service meat market in Delhi. Worcester's go-to old-fashioned butcher shop and specialty market since 1947 and now at 1123 Central Street in Lemonster. Bill Thomas, we started talking about it a little bit at the end of that extended regulation, but if you're Lemonster, this can go one of two ways. This either becomes the rallying cry for your team, getting ready to go into this Worcester City Classic, which I think at this point in time, I almost wish they weren't playing in, maybe just playing a one regular season game at some point next week to give them a chance to recharge the batteries a little bit. But that's not the situation they're in. They've got a game on tomorrow, 3 o'clock against Doherty at Worcester North. Possibly a game on Monday should they win in advance. And then if they win in advance again next Thursday in the championship of the Worcester City Classic, all those games being played at Worcester North. And there are some great teams in that tournament. Franklin and Natick and obviously Lemonster and Worcester North. And the list goes on and on and on and on. It's going to be some great basketball. Where do you go from here? Does this build you? Does this galvanize your team, Bill Thomas? I'm going to keep throwing questions uh, I, at you. I think it does. To okay. be honest, I think it does because, you know, uh, 
you know, we talked about the the uh, uh, advanced uh, schedule this week. Uh, lots of games. I bet you they wish they could uh, maybe throw it up again right now and maybe get this one out of the way. Put it in the rearview mirror and uh, and try to overcome this. You know, every so often a team comes out flat. They throw up a stinker. That's not indicative of the season the limits the Blue Devils have had by no means. But, uh, you know, I want to give some credit to the, what I would call the sixth man tonight. The Wachusett crowd was incredible, oh, especially yeah. in the first half. The Blue Devils are shooting at them under under the basket on the away side. And, uh, and the crowd for Wachusett was just uh, on top of every play, everything the Blue Devils were doing down there. And that started during warm-ups. And, uh, and I saw it, and Kate mentioned it too, during pregame warm-ups, the Blue Devils were struggling from the outside just during the shoot-around. But... The crowd down there, they were on them, and they were reacting with every miss during practice. It continued into that first quarter, and, and it just snowballed, I think, out of the warm-ups. And uh, before you know it, the uh, Mountaineers had a 13-zip lead before, you know, Lemister found their way through the hoop uh, the, for the first basket, but never able to make up that first quarter deficit. And I give some, uh, some credit, a lot of the credit, to the sixth man uh, under the basket uh, at the in that first half, the Mountaineers crowd. and student body they were definitely into it tonight i'm not here to explain away lemonster's struggles offensively tonight because they've been pervasive throughout the year but the three-point baskets in particular their inability to understand their position on the floor and i believe this has to do with your periphery you're so used to the single black line being the three-point line because in high school girls and boys line distance is the exact same so there's just one line on the floor when you go to any gym all across the high schools in the state you come to a neutral site that is a college floor and because the college distances now between men's and women's are different, and you can see it's a solid foot and a half now, Bill Thomas. It's still not even, if you were to paint the NBA line in, you could add a fourth line in there as well, still distance-wise. But Lemonster was moving their way up, and every three-pointer they took, they cozied their toes up to that line the same way they would if they were playing in your standard high school gym. That is a good, Billy, you're better at spatial relations. What's that, <laughs> two feet from the Probably college from line the, uh, to the high school line? Yeah, I would say uh, it's it's uh, a good foot and a half at least. I mean, we're we're 50 feet away here, but... Uh, you know, it, but there's no lines under the basket. That's correct. When it comes to making layups, too. And uh, Lemons that's been had, a struggle. had their problems around the hoop, in the lane, you know. So let's just not throw it on the multiple lines, the paint on the floor. Lemons' gym's got a lot of lines on the floor. It they does. Play, you know, six Only one three-point line. Well, however. but, you know, a lot of volleyball lines. <laughs> and this and that in different directions the courts are going, you know. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's, I think it was a little more than just lines on the floor tonight. And, um Sometimes if you rely on a three-point shot too much, you know, we've seen them run the baseline, and let's give Mountaineers defense. I mean, oh. they played a hard zone. You know, they got at that baseline, and they collapsed on everything. As soon as they saw that the Blue Devils were not hitting from outside, made it infinitely harder to work the ball inside, and uh, that was the outcome. And that's why I said it wasn't going to be an effort to explain it away. No. It's just the reality of what you could see in the discomfort, and, one and thing, that to me has something to do with it. And, 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 it, and one thing leads to another. Yes. It just kind of snowballed. You know, you're not hitting your threes. Now you're trying to force it in. Mountain is a collapse on the defense their hands and feet are everywhere and so now you try to kick it back out and you're not hitting that now you become frustrated and you, you know you throw a turnover two in there and uh, before you know it you give up two or three baskets you cut that lead down to half a dozen and before you know it's ballooned back up to double digits and hey how about a word of, of mention too for the mountaineer defense they played that intense two three zone with man-to-man -man principles uh you know a la that syracuse university zone and i mean everyone knows if you've listened to this broadcast at all the shine that i've taken to that defense but Coach Tom Gibbon's team played it very well tonight. And like you said, Bill Thomas, they collapsed to the basketball. Whenever Lemons would get inside, they would pinch down on them. Whenever it would move to the outside, the zone would extend and find its way to the outside as well. They just played phenomenally on the defensive end of the floor, to say nothing of their offense. And, and the thing that that defense allows them to double quick, too. You know, you get somebody off to the side, you can you can bring that those two uh, end defenders in and just makes it infinitely harder for the offense but you need a lot of quick uh, uh, quickness for that to be able to jump back to be able to protect the baseline and collapse in but if the offense uh, on the other side is not uh, scoring from out beyond the arc you know that just makes that zone defense so much easier to play because now you just got the lane you dare him to shoot and uh, blue devils were coming up empty i alluded to it way back in that first quarter bill thomas you don't spot one of the most talented basketball teams in this state 13 points and then hope you can find your way back into the game. You change that first quarter of the game, maybe first quarter and a half, the 49-44 win maybe is a lot closer. Maybe we're still playing yeah, in and, this basketball and, you know, game. We talked about the uh, Mountaineers being ranked 20th in Division One in the state. 
the, you know, the Central Mass, they're obviously a, a top two, top three team. Um, but, uh, you know, and even statewide, we'll have to see how they match up. But I'll put them up against any team in the state. Indeed I will. And they are deservedly the Class A Midland Wachusett League champion for this 2022 inaugural edition of this tournament. It has been an absolute blast to follow this tournament this week and watch these eight teams in Class A narrow their way down to a Mountaineer Championship and a Mountaineer banner that goes up in that beautiful facility they have up on the hill in Holden. Upcoming schedule brought to you by Manny's Appliance. Manny's features a complete lineup of major brand name appliances with exclusive rebates the big box stores do not have. Buy the best from Manny's, 120 Hamilton Street in Lemonster. Hey, we got more Game of the Week action for you. It's February Vacation Week, but there's plenty of basketball to be played, and the Game of the Week continues. It's going to be here on the K-Zone, as well as with our partners on RFM. It's girls basketball taking center stage on Tuesday. If you're watching us on RFM, as I said earlier, ignore the graphic. That's February 22nd. Tip-off is at 5.15. Excuse me. Pre-game tip-off is at 5.15. Tip-off is at 5.30 at Air Shirley. It's Air Shirley and Lemonster. Going to be an exciting one there. Got an opportunity to, to trade messages today with Athletic Director Steve Kendall at Air Shirley. Looking forward to going out there and visiting that lovely facility over in Air. Should be a lot of fun for that action. Girls basketball, Air Shirley in Lemonster coming up on Tuesday, February the 22nd. 5.15 is our pregame. 5.30 is the tip-off on the K-Zone Game of the Week and here on RFM as well. We're looking forward to that action as well. Game of the Week brought to you by Woodcomb Insurance. Woodcomb has the right coverage at the right price with a local team of insurance pros ready to help. Online at Woodcomb Dot com And the K-Zone Game of the Week brought to you by Bolton Orchards. Get fresh every day in Bolton at the junctions of Route 110 and 117. Take the short drive to Bolton Orchards today. I want to thank Bill Thomas and Kate Robbins for their great work tonight. DJ Derek Gr drown back at Master Control, pushing the buttons and making the magic happen. Hey, you want an opportunity to relive this one or any of the action you've seen in this 2022 basketball season? We got it for you, available right now. Facebook.com slash Media Ravelry. That's where your live action is on RFM. On demand, tinyurl.com slash Media Ravelry or YouTube.com. Search Ravelry Family Media. Like, follow, and subscribe today for all of that action as well archive going all the way back to the beginning of RFM's coverage as well as some classic action from years gone by. From the beautiful facility here at Worcester State University in this wellness center, we want to thank the great folks here at Worcester State University and Worcester State University Athletics for not only being tremendous hosts, they were with us shoulder to shoulder to get this one on the air for you tonight, both on the K-Zone and here on RFM. We thank them so very much for being tremendous hosts and pitching in with us. We thank Dean and Jeff and Debbie and and Emily for their support. Thank you, Kate, uh, for their support tonight and all the great staff here at, uh, at Worcester State for their support this evening. Once again, the Mountaineers are champions of the Midland Wachusett League Class A on the boys' basketball side of things and the girls as well. 49-44, Wachusett's boys down Lemonster tonight here from the Wellness Center at Worcester State University. For all of us here at the K-Zone and RFM, I am Todd Robbins saying thank you so very much for being a part of our family this evening. And until next Tuesday, we say so long, everybody.